No mai haere mai uh, ki ngā tangata o Tākupu ki te kaupapa i tēnei rā. Welcome to the people of the northern suburbs to this webinar, uh, the first of the ward webinar series with regards to the annual plan. My name is Esther Buchold of Soulstone and I'm here as your MC and your host today. Uh, as is the kaupapa, as is the custom with Wellington City Council meetings, uh, we will begin with a karakia and I would like to invite Andy Foster, your Mayor, to come in and open for us today. Welcome Andy. Oh, you're on mute. Uh, still on mute, F5 perhaps? Ah, that's better, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, back in the office today, so great to have you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's lovely to be back, it's kind of uh, kind of a little bit strange to be back and feels like we've never been away but feels like we've been away for a long time, it's a very strange feeling. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Whakatakatahau ki te tonga, kia mā kina kina ki uta. Kia mā tara tara ki tai. E tio, e hoka, hei hauhu, ti hei Māori ora. Māori ora. Kia ora, Andy. Kia ora. Kia uh, And uh, in recent weeks, life has changed in ways that none of us could have imagined, and we've all had to adapt to new ways of living and working and playing. And so it is with the usual Wellington City Council uh, annual plan engagements. So here we are. Um, uh, in this session, in this online session, you will have the opportunity to hear from presenters, uh, Andy Foster, your Mayor, and Jenny Condi on the uh, parking policy, as well as your local councillors uh, to have questions about these plans and about your local communities answered. So welcome, great to have you here. And Olivia, if you could flick to the next slide. So just a little bit of housekeeping, uh, because this, this is a new format, so we won't be telling you that you need to duck under the table, uh, but you will see on your right hand side a dialogue box uh, where you have the opportunity to have a play uh, and change the scene, change your screen to suit you and who you want to speak, so have a play with that. You're on mute, uh, so you're not able to talk to us. Some of our webinars have uh, dozens and dozens of people registered. Uh, but there is a questions box. You have pre-sent some questions to us that we'll be taking. And throughout the session, uh, you can also log questions and we'll be picking some of those up. There's also a handouts uh, drop down file and there's four handouts in there related to uh, the parking policy and the annual plan for you to have a look at. And this webinar is also being recorded so that for those of those people who couldn't turn up today can see it at another time. Um, and if that's you, uh, if you weren't able to make it at this time, because some of us are of course back at work now in the office, uh, welcome to you too. No my heart am I. Next slide. So our agenda today is uh, an introduction by myself uh, and then Andy Foster, your Mayor, will be speaking on the annual plan, taking your questions. Uh, and then Jenny Condy, who's also your local councillor, will be speaking on the parking policy and taking your questions. And finally, we'll be bringing in uh, other ward councillors, uh, Malcolm Sparrow and Jill Day, uh, as a final panel uh, to answer a range of particular questions, particularly around your local area. So keep those questions coming in. So here's your panel and if you would like to all come on in now. Bring on your webcams. This takes a moment and uh, introduce yourselves. Perhaps we could start with you Andy. Hi everyone, uh, Andy Foster. I've uh, got the privilege of being your Mayor. Uh, I live in Karori, so I'm not in the northern suburbs, uh, but uh, I love, I've love i always loved serving the city and I look forward to this, this unique way of engaging with you. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Jenny. Uh, kia ora mai tato. I'm Jenny Condi. I live in Tawa, I grew up in Johnsonville. And the exciting news in my bubble now that we're back to level two is my children were back at school today, which is very <laughs> exciting. They were excited to go and I was excited to see them go. <laughs> Very good. Welcome, Jill. No my heart, am I? 
Uh, it's lovely to um, be here today. I can't see you all, but I know that there are people out there. So um, thank you very much for coming along to um, talk about the annual plan and, and hear what's happening in the city. It has been an unusual time. Um, it's an exciting day in our house too. The children were really excited to be back at school. Um, our dog wasn't quite so excited. Um, we brought our youngest one to school and um, she, I was holding her jersey and she forgot to take it off me. So I had to run after her with the dog and he got so excited excited he refused to turn around actually refused to walk home because he wanted to go with her and we had to be picked up so um, it is a very unusual time just important for you to know that we're all having our little awkward moments um, but yeah I, I know that um, every change brings us um, interest but also challenges. Oh, yeah. Kia ora, kia ora Jill. Okay. Uh, welcome Malcolm. Kia ora everyone I'm Malcolm Sparrow third term I'm Wellington City Councillor and I have the Community Resilience and Emergency Preparedness Portfolios and am Chair of the Regulatory Processes Committee and a little bit about my bubble, I've been at home, well councillors have all been working at home like many people have over the past seven or eight weeks and are likely to do for some time yet but my bubble has comprised my wife and my dog and both working, well, my wife and I, <laughs> we've been working from home and um, like many people have done a lot more walk, walking in our neighbourhood and we have seen things returning to normal a whole lot more, which is good in many respects, but I think that the um, seeing people out walking and biking has been something that it would be great to see that continue more. I'm not quite sure how we can do that, but um, yeah, we have, I think a lot of lessons have been learned that we can put into practice and do things better in many ways in the mm. weeks and months ahead. That's true, there is much to learn. Thank you, kia ora koutou. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, and Olivia, if you could bring the slide deck up, the slide deck back up, because that's a little bit about uh, us and about the day today, uh, but you also in registering for this, um, uh, you told it. We asked you a couple of questions. One was where you live. So about half of you are from Takapu Northern Ward, and quite a lot of you are from Wellington City, and just a few of you from outside Wellington City. So welcome. You also asked us some questions that you would like answered today. Uh, and a number of questions about the annual plan, particularly around the rights raises and the priorities for spending. Uh, and uh, Mayor Andy Foster will be talking to those. Uh, what this means about deferred spending from the long-term plan, uh, interest in climate change and water infrastructure as well. You also had some questions about the parking policy and in general, those were about um, the parking versus active transport prioritisation that was going to be happening uh, and you wanted improved parking in the central city. So uh, we'll be um, uh, answering those both within the presentations and after the presentations as well. So thank you for those. Um, and just before we launch into the presentation, uh, we are going to launch a poll for Andy, so thank you to the councillors. I'll get you to step out of the room for the moment. And Olivia, if you could launch the poll. So to help uh, Andy in um, speaking to his presentation, can you let us know whether you got a chance to look at the Wellington City Council annual plan information? Just pick whichever one best fits with your situation. So how are we going? Are those coming in, Olivia? Yes, so we've had well over half of our participants today answer that poll and we've got a bit of a mixed bag here. Uh, Would you like with to close it? Would you like to close it so we can see it? Let's have a Absolutely. look. Absolutely. So we can see the results. Oh, great. Quite uh, a lot, Andy, quite a lot of people have um, had a look one way or another, Andy. So uh, opportunity yeah. to delve in a little bit more deeply. Thank you very much. Over to you, Andy. Well, first of all, um, thank you very much, Esther, and thank you everybody for uh, for being online and joining us here. Um, this is a completely different form of engagement than uh, we've ever had before. Obviously, the circumstances demand that. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say, first of all, welcome again to all of you, and congratulations to everyone, because we've done, as a community and as a country, we've done incredibly well over the last, what is it, seven or eight weeks, uh, in responding to uh, the threat of COVID, 
uh, our numbers now look really, really good. And, and we are doing, I think we're doing really well and we've just got to keep on doing really well so that we can actually get rid of the virus once and for all. Um, because it's very clear not only there were significant health risks to us, but also significant economic and social risks to us as well, uh, should the virus have got hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by going through uh, on some of the impacts of COVID-19 on Wellington. We, uh, we started out with a, a draft annual plan we were about to go out to consultation with, and then COVID hit, and we had to go back to the drawing board and do some significant rethinking about that. So we did do that, and that's why we're doing uh, this later than we normally would uh, normally would do. We'll also be dealing with um, submissions as they come in. So when people want to speak to us, uh, we will actually do those as we go through the, the month-long engagement process rather than wait until the end, because we simply don't have the time at the end to do them all at that point. So. Let's start off with the first slide here, COVID-19's impact on Wellington. As the slide says we don't know yet what the full impact will be. Uh, we've never been through this before. It's clearly it's a very, very uncertain time. Uh, for those of us who have uh, jobs that haven't been affected directly um, by, by COVID, our economic situation possibly hasn't changed enormously. It will have changed to some degree, but it probably won't have changed enormously. But there are many people in our community whose jobs or whose businesses are being, have been, and will be significantly adversely affected by COVID-19. It's it's not hard to work out that if you've been involved, if you're involved in, say, the tourism industry or retail or hospitality um, or arts and events, those kind of uh, businesses, um, accommodation, those kind of businesses are really significantly affected and and really hurting as a result of COVID-19. So some people don't have the ability to be able to afford, for example, rates as they would have done before. Um, we know that the next few months are going to be tough. Uh, we've all seen the, the economic forecast. We just don't know how tough. There are various crystal balls around that, but it is going to have a significant effect on essentially on all of us, some very directly and some indirectly. Uh, we'll go to the, the next slide, please. Um, Council also runs a business here too. So COVID-19 has had a major impact on the council. Uh, the first uh, part of the slide there talks about the impact on lost revenue and dividends. So we think that we have already incurred by the end of the by the end of June. So in the in the financial year we're currently in. So it's not the annual plan year we're talking about, but the 2019-20 year. We think we've already uh, incurred something like 20 million dollars in lost revenue, and we're expecting that the impact uh, going into 2020-2021. So it's the annual plan we're talking about is potentially up to close to 50 million dollars. So almost $70 million all up. Council runs businesses, is a business in uh, in its wider sense, and so it is significantly directly impacted by COVID-19. And also wanted to mention here is that we already had significant cost pressures ahead of us. So we are currently in the third year of our 2018 to 2028 long-term plan, that's the 10-year budget, 2018 to 2028. Uh, and we were expecting this year uh, to have a 7.1% increase, the next year 6.8, the following year 6.2, and then the next year 7.0. So effectively close to 28% over the four years, so almost an average of 7%. Um, and that excluded investment in three, extra investment in three waters. Let's get Wellington moving. We've uh, been putting in place some temporary library arrangements in the central city, so two of those are up and running, and one is shortly two be up and running. Those costs weren't included in the long-term plan either, and neither was fixing up Tanaka Civic Square, and certainly COVID wasn't in there, that $70 million I just talked about. So all of those things were on top of the 7%, 7.1% this year, 6.8 the following year, etc. So we had really significant impacts on us and a very, very challenging financial situation for Council, and therefore for our ratepayers. Next one, please, Olivia. So our overall approach, the, 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 the most important thing here is that we need Wellington to be able to recover from the pandemic as fast as possible. If we have businesses being lost and jobs being lost, then obviously the capacity to afford uh, council services is that much, is that much lower. Uh, so the first thing that we did, and we did it very quickly, uh, and in fact I think we were probably the second council in the country to do this, was to put in place a pandemic response and recovery plan. Uh, and that was the first thing there was to try and soften the impact of COVID-19 on our business community and on the jobs they support. So we said that the, the rates bill, which will be the rates bill you've 
currently probably just received. I know I got mine last night. Um, that we would allow uh, those who are affected by COVID uh, to defer payment of that rates bill without the usual 10% rates penalty through till December. So, so effectively that was taking the entire rates bill away from those businesses and those uh, residential ratepayers who were particularly affected by loss of income through COVID and deferring that till December. We also uh, said that we would freeze, for example, um, liquor licensing fees, pavement licensing fees, so a whole lot of the different fees that were uh, would have otherwise fallen on the business community and on people who are using our services as well. So for example, gym fees, uh, that we would freeze those so that those were uh, not falling on people during that period of time. And then we also, as a, as a landlord, we uh, then also said what we would not charge, uh, whether it's businesses or community organisations who were in our properties uh, over that period of time. So that was all about trying to reduce the impact of uh, COVID-19 on our community. Next one, please, Olivia. So the annual plan is the second part of the response. The first bit was that pandemic response and recovery plan. And I could talk more about the recovery side. Obviously, we're doing a lot of planning to try and get the city back up and running and a program of activities and events, which will come through, particularly when we get into um, alert level one. The second part, though, is the draft annual plan, which is what we discussed today. And really, the big challenge there was to try and balance the uh, the rates impact, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment, with the impact that with needing to provide the services that the, the community still wants to do and still to keep on investing in the city because we want to keep the, the city growing and improving and, and being confident and proud of who we are. And so really important to try and get that balance. We think we've probably got that balance about right. Uh, we do need to keep on working to try and make sure we're more efficient in the delivery of our services and the, and the operation of the, of the council. Uh, but we think the balance, broadly speaking, is about right. Olivia, can we go on to the next one too, please? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what we are doing, first thing is we're doing is we're borrowing to offset that lost revenue. So I said about $70 million, and you can see there on the slide, 38 million in lost revenue in 2020-2021. We were also planning on some increases in various user charges, which many of which we are not proceeding with. So we're planning on proceeding with some increases in landfill charges and marina fees, but we're not, for example, planning on uh, going ahead at this stage with increases in building consent fees uh, or uh, with some increases in parking uh, parking charges. So those come to another 11 million, so 38 plus 11, and then there's a the 20 million I've already talked about. So close to $70 million all up in lost revenue. If we added that to rates, it would increase our rates bill this year by about 12%. Now clearly that's completely unacceptable, probably at any time, but particularly at a time when the community can least afford to pay. This is the rainy day, uh, so we are going to borrow to cover that $70 million and repay it over a period of the next 10 years or so. I mean, obviously it's got to be paid, but uh, we're going to spread that over a period of time rather than have it hit when people can least afford it. Next one too, please. Thanks, Olivia. We're also continuing, as I said, to invest in the future uh, and some of the major projects which we already had in train, uh, let's get Wellington moving. And in fact, we're trying to do as much as we can, as quickly as we can. We've put some of these things into the government's shovel-ready projects and, and saying to government, look, if you, can, if you can help us out, we can make these things happen faster and also reduce the impost on our communities. So let's get Wellington moving. We're particularly focusing here on uh, walking, cycling and public transport as early initiatives or early improvements. And we're also doing the business cases for state highway work and mass transit, which we'll uh, get to consult with you probably later on in the winter. Uh, Tanaka Civic Precinct, we'll have a paper in front of councillors uh, next week, uh, and that will be in the public arena at the end of this week. People have really been looking forward to having some news about the Central Library, and so that will be in front of you and be able to look at that, uh, look at the engineering information, etc., cetera, and, uh, and um, give us feedback on that. Uh, the Central City Libraries, I've already mentioned those. So uh, Te Awe, which is a third of those, uh, is due to open in a couple of months' time. Uh, and that is right down on Lampton Key. So um, we're looking forward to having that open. Uh, and then also the Three Waters Network. Uh, obviously, in the last few months, we've had quite a number of breaks of pipes. We need to keep investing in those. I've set up a, a mayoral task force with council support uh, to look at the level of investment we're making in the Three Waters. Uh, the condition of our assets, whether we need to invest more. And in this budget, we are proposing to invest more, particularly in 
uh, leak investigation and condition assessment and fixing uh, of, of pipes. Next one please, Olivia. Some of the key projects which are um, continuing in 2020-21, I've already mentioned the three waters, so we have put in place uh, another $2.9 million in extra funding for the three waters this, this year in this budget. The Convention and Exhibition Centre, uh, so that was obviously underway uh, prior to uh, prior to COVID, uh, started in uh, about September of last year, uh, and that, that is producing something like 800 jobs involved in that construction at the moment, so very important to continue with that. <coughs> St James Theatre, the strengthening of St James, which is due to be finished at the end of 2021. Uh, uh, just in time for the Festival of the Arts. We hope it's still going to make that time uh, timetable because that's really, really important. Uh, Tanaka Select Precinct and the Central Library, I've already mentioned those, so there'll be paper in front of councillors fairly shortly. The Town Hall, uh, construction again was underway with that and that is, that is continuing for, to strengthen the Town Hall. And I've already mentioned Let's Get Wellington moving as well. Next one too, please, Olivia. And there's also community projects and more locally based projects uh, in the budget as well. The first two here, Nio Gorge Slip Repair and Stabilisation. Well, obviously there's been a very large slip uh, a couple of years ago on Nio Gorge. Uh, we will be getting into actually doing the work on that. All the investigation, et cetera, has been done. So we'll be getting into doing the work of actually fixing that and stabilising uh, the, the, the gorge. It's a very, very important route in our city. It's also one of our key resilience routes. If the, if the main highway uh, failed, uh, Nio Gorge is a particularly critical route. We're also doing, and it's already underway, some retaining wall on a on the route into Wadestown, uh, between Wadestown and, and Thorndon. So that work is underway. And then um, there were a number of additions to the budget uh, in our debate at the end of April. Uh, and two are highlighted there. One is $150,000 for home energy audits. And that fits with our desire to reduce our climate impact. Obviously, if people have warmer homes, they're healthier, but they also will, you, will use less energy. And the other one to highlight there is $200,000 for weed and pest control. So we've been doing a fantastic uh, job as a city uh, in restoring the natural environment of the city. And this is one of the next stages. So we're obviously we're doing predator free Wellington, uh, but the next part of this is also doing more work on getting rid of weeds and in restoring uh, the, the biodiversity of our city. And then there's also local uh, community centres being upgraded in Arrow Valley, Newtown and Strathmore. And in the northern suburbs, uh, New Town, uh, Newlands Park uh, development is, um, is something to look forward to. And Alex Moore Park Hub is also you know, another long awaited project which is going to get underway very, very shortly. Next one too, please. Uh, just to, we put out rates options. Now I'm always a fan of putting out options to people so it gives you some choices. The two options there are 5.1%, 5.07% and 2.3%. Go to the next one, please. So the 5.1% there, uh, existing levels of service, capital program carries on unchanged. You might want to give us some feedback on that. I've already mentioned the increases to marina and waste fees and that we are not at this stage increasing a lot of other fees we were looking to increase. Uh, so we're taking that to onto the debt. Uh, and all of these things mean that the rates, future rates increases will be higher than we were additionally um, planning on to pay those those additional borrowings. So it's the, the 70 odd million dollars that we are expecting to um, to debt fund uh, in terms of the, the deficit from lost revenue. Next one. Thanks Olivia. Uh, and the, the second option is 2.3% rates increase and effectively that's the same as the 5.1 but what it means is that we are debt funding the depreciation costs. Now just to explain that what we do is we, um, we revalue our assets uh, every three years and particularly when it comes to the core infrastructure. The reason we do that is because it obviously costs more to fix pipes now than it did say 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And so we have to, to revalue and then we fully depreciate uh, the assets so that we're trying to collect the right amount to keep the pipes and services fixed. So if we went for this option, what we'll be doing is we will be debt funding that rather than funding it through rates this year. What that would mean is that we would be picking that cost up in future years. Uh, and so that means that the future rates, effectively next year's rates, will be higher uh, by about 4% uh, than they would be if we did if we took the, the first option. So our recommendation is, op is, the, is the first option, option 8, 5.1% rather than 2.3. Normally I would like to keep the rates as low as possible, but the reality is that if we go for the lower rates now, we're going to pay for it next year. Uh, and so we think it's a better balance to 
go for option A with a 5.1% now. <clears throat> Next uh, one, please, Olivia. Olivia, next one, please. Right, okay, that brings me to the end of what I needed to say, and I'll, I'll pass you back to uh, Esther. I think we've got another quick poll there to, to run to. We do. Uh, see if you understand the, the trade-offs, if, if I've explained it clearly enough or not. That's great. So, Olivia, if you could launch that poll for us. So just choose the option that makes the most sense to you. Sure do understand the trade-offs. They make quite a lot of a sense. Don't understand them or I need more time to have an opinion on that. So are we starting to get some poll lists coming through, Olivia? Yeah, so we've got a good number of our attendees voting there, so I'm just gonna close this poll now. Right. Thank you. Very good. So uh, there's nobody who didn't understand them at all. Andy, great work. Oh, I'm, relie uh, I'm relieved by that. <laughs> <laughs> And some people need a little bit more work on, a little bit more thinking on those. No, fair so, enough, fair um, enough too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's quite, it's quite a lot of information in there yeah. to take in. Yeah. Thanks for that, Olivia. If you could bring us, uh, me and and, my, Andy and myself back, um, and uh, we had some questions for you, Andy. Uh, registrants or people who registered had put some questions in, and please do feel free to ask more questions uh, as Andy's talking, so we so you can get really clear on that. Anything that we can't answer right now or don't have time for, uh, the team uh, behind this webinar will be answering those and posting them as soon as possible on Let's Talk. So, uh, Diane, if I could invite you in, and uh, what's your first question to Andy? Um, sure. Can you hear me okay, Esther? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, first question, uh, Andy is from Sophie, and it is, what have you deferred spending money on that was in the long-term plan? At this stage, we haven't really deferred. What we have done is we've pushed some of the, the costs off this year to next year. So it's some of the costs around uh, the preparatory work for Let's Get Wellington Moving will be an example. Uh, some of those costs around uh, the, the three waters infrastructure. Uh, so that's probably the key thing. Those things will then hit next year, but we felt that that was a better way to go than to to include them this year. So we, we started at 9.2% uh, as our preferred option pre-COVID, and then we pulled it back to the 5.1. Great, thank you. Diane, okay, what's the next question? Qu yep, uh, another question here, this is from Chris. Uh, if we opt for a lower rates rise this time, what is the likely rise in the following year? So look, Chris, the, it's a good question that the, um, the numbers are, are shown as a graph in the annual plan document, but it basically says that at the moment we're looking at around 9% if we go for uh, the 5.1 this year. And obviously there's, there's so many different things that we've got to go through before we get to that point. Uh, but if we don't, if we go down to the, the lower rates rise uh, this year, we would end up with something closer to 14. Um, and that's obviously pretty uncomfortable. I don't think any of us particularly would like that idea. Mm -hmm. So quite a big differential there. Yeah. We've got a couple of questions. You know, we, we, I was going to say, as we said, we started off with this one with um, you know a whole series of roughly seven percent, and that was without all of those um, all, all of those critical pieces of investment in our infrastructure. Um, so we were looking at some pretty challenging times already. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in the city. A couple more questions, Diane. Uh, yep. Um, this one is from, <coughs> excuse me, from Helena. <coughs> excuse me, and the question is, is Wellington City Council going to prioritise water infrastructure, public transportation and library services in the annual plan? Uh, so look, the answer is yes, yes and yes to all three of those. Um, so as I said, uh, we're already putting extra money into our water um, infrastructure now, uh, and that's in this budget. Uh, what will happen is between now and uh, next year, we go through what's called the long-term plan, and that, that means that we look at our all of our um, asset management areas in detail, and so the Mineral Task Force will be feeding into that in terms of the, the water infrastructure, and that'll give us a really good picture of what's the state of our infrastructure and what do we need to invest in it? Are we investing the right amount? Are we investing too little? With public transport, uh, we are aiming to accelerate that. I keep on saying we want to do it faster, 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 um, it, uh, we've bought, bringing forward some money. We're asking government to help us with the Shovel Ready project as well, so we get as much done as we possibly can. Obviously, we've got engagement processes to go through with a lot of those things, um, which means we can't just do it immediately, but we are aiming to do that as quickly as possible. And then with respect to the library, as I said, um, 
we will have a paper, which you'll see some publicity probably around the end of the week on about the central library. It's going to be a big conversation for us all because it's uh, it's not going to come cheap. Uh, and we will really want people to put their thinking caps on as to as to what the right answer is for our um, library and our library services. Mm, mm, important resource to the city. Uh, I think Absolutely. we have one, one or two more questions, Diane. Okay. Yep, um, one more from Anne, um, and I will say with, there's a few questions just coming through live as well, so I'm going to do this one and then we'll have a little review and see if there's something there that kind of builds on these. Uh, but this one's from Anne, and it is um, wanting to know what councillors see as the pri priority in these tough times. Well, look, I'm, I'm going to give you the, the areas that I, I see as the, the priorities. Um, and uh, they are, there's, I've sort of grouped them into five. Um, so the first one of them is core infrastructure and resilience. So that's, you know, things like the waters, et cetera, and resilience. Obviously, we need to make sure that our city, if we have a, a, an earthquake, is not going to fall apart. Uh, so we've been working hard on that for a long period of time. Second one is economic recovery. And that is, as you know, we're in the COVID situation, we need to make sure that we don't end up with a very large number of vacant uh, vacant spaces, businesses falling over in the central city. So, and we've got to draw people back into the central city to support them. So that's, that's critical. Uh, the third one is is the wider economic. What's what's our economic arts and culture future? I mean, there's been this real feel that uh, we've kind of lost our arts and culture crown over the last few years. So we need to, to polish that and to try and get that working again properly. And uh, with with respect to the economy, we you know we can make more, for example, of being the capital city uh, and playing to our strengths. So we've, we've definitely got to do some work there to make sure that our economy, which underpins everything, is, is strong. Uh, and then the third area is in the transport and urban planning area. We already mentioned, let's get well into moving. Uh, and in urban planning, we, we were about to go out and consult on planning for growth. Uh, we had to pause that because of COVID, so we'll need to, to revise that and come back and, and talk to you about that. Uh, the fourth area is in reducing our, our environmental footprint, so that's all those things around uh, trying to um, restore the natural environment. Uh, Te Atakura, which is our um, climate change uh, plan, so we're about to get an, an action plan in respect of that. And then building a circular economy in terms of waste so that we're not uh, putting so much um, waste into the landfill but are reusing it. Uh, so those those are the areas that the sort of five areas which are um, I see as the priorities. Very good. And I see there's a tranche of questions come in uh, as Andy's been talking. Do you want to pick up a couple of those, or there's some that you want to take to the panel, Diane? Um, I think we might just uh, just review them and maybe take them to the panel. There's um, a really long and interesting question here from Craig, Granada Village. Thanks, Craig, for sending that through. If we don't get to it right now, we will certainly come back to you with answers to that. Fantastic. Uh, kia ora, Andy. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, and uh, I would like to invite Jenny Condy in now. And Olivia, if you could bring up the slide. So, so did you take, uh, I'll, I'll drop off, shall I, for the moment, or did I say that? Drop off. No, if you could okay, drop off. Right. And, uh, Done. Not off the we face of you, please, though, Andy. <laughs> no, 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 uh, I'll just turn my webcam off. <laughs> Great. Uh, welcome, Jenny, here to talk to us about the parking policy as part of your portfolio. Yes, thanks very much, Esther. So we have a review of our parking policy underway at the moment. It's been going on. Um, council staff have been working on it for several years now, and it's it's finally coming out for consultation, which is really exciting for everyone involved. So I, if I can see the next slide, please, Olivia. So the purpose of the policy is really to create a framework about how we prioritise parking and on-street space in our city. So it's focusing really on, particularly on our on-street parking, it also looks at off-street parking. Um, but council doesn't have a lot of off-street parking, it's mostly private providers. And so the, the main issue we're looking at here is how do we prioritise our on-street space for parking compared to other kinds of things like bike lanes or bus lanes and other things we might use that space for. And the idea behind having this framework is it'll give us some transparency when we make decisions about, um, about parking on a particular street. We'll have a clear framework that can guide us to make those decisions. So nothing in this parking policy actually will change any parking spaces on a street near you. It really is a, a high level framework that will guide those more practical <coughs> decisions as we go forward over the years. And it, you know, one of the things we're looking at with this framework is that we are going to have a reduced amount of on-street parking available as we go forward because we have made this commitment to move pe more people with fewer vehicles and support other kind of modes of transport. And that takes up space, as I said, for things like bus lanes and cycleways. 
So we're not going to have more on street parking than we've had before, and we're very likely to have less on street parking than we have at the moment. So we have to get really good about how we're going to prioritise that space. And that's what this framework and policy is all about. Next slide, please. So the overview of the policy, it, it sets out some policy objectives and principles, which are very high level, um, things that we're trying to achieve around parking and the parking space that we have. And we also look at a parking space hierarchy, which is which types of parking do we want to prioritise? Because there are many different kinds of parking. There's short stay parking, there's loading zones, there's residential parking, there's commuter parking. So lots of different kinds of parking. What do we want to prioritise in different spaces around our city? And then we've, we've got um, an area-based planning approach, which I'll talk a bit more about in a moment. But this idea is, in the past, we've often made parking changes bit by bit. So we look at a particular problem street, for example, and we say, OK, this is a problem. There's not enough parking here. Let's How do we fix this? And we make some changes on the street, and then the problems spill over onto the streets nearby. And then we think, oh, no, we've got problems on the streets nearby. And so we go in and try and fix those problems again one by one. And this idea behind an area-based planning is that we take a more holistic view at all the streets in an area and we look at how all of those pieces fit together as we're making changes. The other advantage of that is that we can bring in other ideas around things like public transport and what kind of facilities are in the area when we're making those decisions. Um, we're also going to be looking at pricing and concessions about how we price parking. Again, this isn't going to result in any immediate changes to the price of parking. This is about having a framework for how we think about pricing our parking so that we're getting the right kind of demand and managing demand for a scarce resource. I'll come to that a bit more in a moment as well. And then we also have um, some information about the parking management hierarchy, which is what do we do when we don't have enough parking in a particular area if a street's having real problems? What are the tools that the council has available and which <coughs> of those should we be using in what order? So it gives us an idea if we've got a problem, we can just look down the list and say, okay, we've tried that already. Let's go on to the next solution and try that. And you can see really, really clearly what the steps are in terms of trying to solve a, a parking problem. And so obviously all of this, we really want your feedback because it's it's all about priorities and what your priorities are. So that's that's why we really need to hear from you about whether you think we've got the principles and our objectives right. So talking a bit more about our area-based approach, again, this gives us a great way to kind of look at the parking in a holistic way across an area of our city. So for example, we might look at somewhere like Newtown, which often has parking challenges, and we could say, okay, well, we know that the hospital's in Newtown and they have a lot of employees who need parking and we can work with the hospital about how we might deal with that. We can talk about all the different things that work in that area. So um, for an example, closer to home, we, could, we might come up with a Johnsonville area-based parking approach. And we would look at, okay, we know that we've got a mall redevelopment that's that's hopefully underway. We know that we've got this brand new community facilities. Um, we know that there's increasing pressure on public transport. How are we going to manage all of those things as well as the schools that are nearby? What are all the, all the different pressures we have on parking around here and how are we going to make a sensible decision for the whole package of streets, not just one at a time? And so these, these would be involving not just, these kinds of conversations wouldn't just involve council staff, we would be including local communities, NZTA, Greater Wellington Regional Council. As I said, in some places like Newtown, it would involve big employers like the hospital. So this is a chance really for us to take a much more holistic view of parking and bring in lots of different groups who are affected by this to have good conversations and make sure we come up with a, a good plan rather than doing it piece by piece. Next slide, please. So the idea around pricing is that, that this is about how we can affect demand for a very scarce resource. And so the, the proposal in the policy is that we're going to shift to a more demand-based um, dynamic pricing system, which means that the price will change more quickly than it changes at the moment. At the moment, we very rarely make any changes to, um, to the parking rates, whereas the proposal here is that, that we would make much more rapid changes to reflect demand. So where demand is the highest, the price would also be higher. And when demand is lower, the price would also be lower. And this might even change, um, be different over the course of the day. 
for example, or different areas in the city at different times. So we know that parking around Courtney Place is much in much higher demand in the evenings, whereas um, parking around Lambton Quay is in higher demand during the day. And so we could make changes in price that would have reflect those changing demand circumstances. And this has been rolled out in several cities around the world, including Auckland have a system that's based on this demand-based pricing, which has been working really well. Again, this wouldn't um, make any immediate changes to the price in our streets, but it's a, a way of, of us thinking about how we might go forward for pricing in the future. And finally, the management hierarchy approach. So when we have a, a problem in a street and we say, oh, or in a, we're doing an area-based based plan and we say, oh, this street is really a problem, we never have enough um, parking here and there's always uh, lots of tickets being issued and lots of problems, what are we going to do? And this sets out the tools that we would look at using. So first you would look at increasing the monitoring and enforcement of any current regulations that are there. So this means making sure that um, we've got uh, parking wardens out and, and, and people are actually obeying the, the rules that are in place at the moment. Once we're sure that that's happening, you would look at things like time restrictions. So um, if we've got a problem where there's not enough parking, for example, again, around the Johnsonville Community Hub, we looked at some of the parking there and a lot of it was being used by commuters who were coming in to use the public transport. But we really wanted people to be able to use that parking to come to the Community Hub. So then we put in time restrictions on those parking spaces so that they would turn over more often during the day and more people would be able to come and use those facilities. Then we can look at other kinds of designations and user restrictions, which can mean things like loading zones or um, residential areas and other kinds of uh, specific parking types. We then can look at bringing in a charge. Um, and if, there, if it's an area where there isn't charging at the moment, whether we need to be bringing in an, a charging scheme and where there is charging, whether we need to increase the price to help us manage the demands of this resource. And finally, we could look at whether we can source um, some alternative supply or increasing the supply. Again, we can't magically create more street space, um, particularly with Wellington's geography. Our streets are already very narrow. Um, so it would be looking about how we would be able to work with other providers, including private providers, um, and how we can work with, with other um, big players in that area to, to work out um, alternatives and other supply. Next slide, please. So we've got some time for Patai. Any questions we've got? We do. Esther? We do. Um, I think we've got time for a couple. Diane, where would you like to start? I think you're on mute, Diane. Let me just take you off. Sorry, I just sorted that. Here I am. <laughs> okay. Yes, we have had some questions come through. And we have some that uh, people sent through as part of the registration also. So um, this one is from Karen and the question is why is parking prioritised over safe transport such as cycling when so many want to cycle? Yeah, thanks Karen. And that's one of the questions that we want to ask you as part of the parking policy of whether you think we've got the priorities right. So we, we have limited on street space and we can choose to use it for parking or we can choose to use it for cycle lanes. We can't have both in the same space at the same time. So that's why this is really important for us to hear from you because we need to know what our communities think those priorities should be. And let's take one more question, Diane, and then we'll bring the whole okay. panel in. Grand, I've got another one here. This is from Vicky. Uh, and the question is, Wellington is lacking in car parks and it is impacting the retailers, arts, etc. How is the council looking to improve parking in the city? Right, so obviously, as I said, we can't magically have more on-street parking. So it's a, it's a complicated question. We've, a lot of the parking that's provided in the city is actually provided by private parking providers such as Wilson's. Um, and and they they make their own decisions about pricing and where they're going to provide parking. What we can do as the city council is work on demand-based management schemes and making sure that we're using the parking space that we have as efficiently as possible. And that's where we really need to hear hear from people, hear back from from people in Wellington about what they want to use that street space for and how we should prioritise it. Very good. I hear a strong plea there uh, to uh, hear from people and there's actually been some questions come in uh, uh, in the box um, about the submissions process and um, uh, where it goes and um, that it's worthwhile, that it's worth people's while to put in these submissions. So if we don't have time to answer that today, we will make sure that we get back to you on that. Um, thank you, Jenny. Uh, and I would now like to invite the rest of the panel back in.
because we also have a lot of uh, fielded a lot of questions about your local community. So, um, so um, let's bring those in. Bring those in. Diane, where would you like to start? Diane, where would you like to start? I will start uh, with, a question start, uh, with a question for Councillor Sparrow, for Sparrow from Marion. And the question is, is the Newlands Park upgrade still going to be done? Yeah, thanks for that question, Marianne. Um, this is specifically mentioned in the annual plan and the, the short answer is yes. The intention was to have it underway and completed this year, but it is likely to go for longer than that primarily thanks to COVID-19. Actually, for a bit more of an update, I think Jill has some information on this, so I'll hand over to her. Yeah, thank you. So um, it is uh, the officers are working really hard on this in the background. And um, Councillor Sparrow, I think if you put your thing on, my, on mute, I'm, I'm repeating through yours. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the uh, staff are working really hard in the background. Um, and I guess, yes, the challenge is that our timeframes have changed because of, um, of COVID-19. Uh, we have also um, had a staff member leave from that team. So people are picking up up the pieces to um, keep things moving uh, and uh, we'll continue to work with the community. There are a number of um, decisions and, and the communications that will be happening from now through till the end of the year. The hope is that uh, the, that work is started before the year ends. Shall I go for another question? Yes, please. Next question. Okay, um, Councillor Day, since you are right there and on the ready, uh, this is a question about Johnsonville Mall. There was actually quite a bit of action on this. This was a registration question from Claire, but we got some coming through the live feed as well. And where might we see something happen with Johnsonville Mall? I could say, gosh, we really do want to see something happen. And um, I have to say that before COVID-19, it was looking really positive. We were having some very good interactions with Stride and really great conversations. And, and from what we could we could see, they were really ready to go. The challenge now is that we're actually, it's like we're in um, Groundhog Day and we've gone back to um, 2009 and where the global financial crisis um, really slowed down um, progress. So what we're going to do, and um, all of the Northern Walk councillors have had a conversation with um, council officers about what we can do to do to keep things moving. There are there are many opportunities um, here that if we work together we can we can see progress. Um, but I can assure you that we, those conversations are happening and we very much want to see this project um, get going. Um, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Esther. Uh, Councillor Day, there was a little bit, some an, a live one came through from Darren. I wonder if you could just elaborate a wee bit. This is, um, if the Johnson Mall retail investment is in doubt or on go slow, um, is the scheduled roading safety improvements, is that likely to be brought forward? Uh, well, again, we'll have to work with um, council officers uh, to to establish um, the sequence of those of those events and make sure that whatever we do needs to work together with with whatever is um, is planned. Um, I think at this stage we would need more information from Stride because we just need to check where they are up to and which uh, their, whether their development needs to change at all slightly. We need to have time to have those conversations, but we will certainly be monitoring and keeping an eye on it. And um, Mayor Foster, you may have. Do, is there anything you want to add to that around um, how we'll manage you know, some of the, the, the roading development on where the library is, um, is waiting for the mall to begin. And I guess what we need to know, and this is where we can um, progress conversations with Strive to work out sequencing and, and what will work. And it may just be that there needs to be some tweaks. But is there anything you want to add to that, Mayor Foster? If you could put yourself, you're on mute, Andy. Olivia, would you like, could you take Andy off mute? Try again, Andy. No, okay. Um, we'll help you with that in, in the background. Um, Olivia. Sorry, now, I now I think I'm unmuted. <laughs> um, I think, as Jill said, I think, I mean, we obviously need to go back to stride now that we're um, now that we're in a level two situation and, and say to them, look, where are you at? The key thing, I think, for stride is that they are obviously we're going to make an investment on the basis of the uh, the level of um, business interest in, in being tenants in the um, in a redeveloped mall. And so obviously that's what they're going to be um, focused on at the moment. 
uh, obviously they were going to play a part and pay a part for uh, some of the, the roading works. We we did a huge amount of uh, investment in roading works around the Johnsville Triangle, uh, what, about three or four years ago, um, and Stribe were, were um, intending and expected to play their part as well. So it's a conversation we need to have with them again to see whether anything's changed with their investment planning uh, and uh, whether there's anything we need to do to try and get them across the line. We, we're working very closely with them to try and get them across the line and remove the uh, any barriers that they had. As Jill said, prior to COVID, we were looking really good, and then we had a global pandemic. Um, so you know, we've got to go. We've got to go back to them again and say, well, where are you guys at now?" And we will do that. Very good. Thank you. Um, another topic, Diane. Yep. Um, Councillor Sparrow, this is from Richard. Are there any aspects of the annual plan that might be of specific interest to Tawa residents? You're on mute, Malcolm. I'm clicking, right. It took a while to unmute. You're in. Anyway, You're right. In. Um, I think it's fair to say that most aspects of the annual plan provide some, certainly benefits, and perhaps specific interest to, to Tawa people, to other Northern Ward residents, both, both directly and indirectly. And, in terms of Tawa, there's previously been specific mention of work being carried out to reduce the, the risk of flooding at an expected cost of more than $9 million, with, and that's with work beginning in the 2020-21 in the financial year. And there's um, encouragement in the plan for business communities to work together as official business improvement districts, one of which, as we know, is in Tawa, and another is currently being mooted or look, or inve investigation started for, for Johnsonville. There's um, support in the plan for local community festivals. We know that council provides <laughs> substantial financial backing for spring and Tawa each year, likewise the um, Christmas parade in, in Johnsonville. And as the mayor mentioned earlier, there's an additional $200,000 in funding for the for biodiversity protection of biodiversity through expanded weed management programs. And um, there's reference to grants provided to organisations committed to reusing our resources and Kiwi community assistance, Tawa based, is, does get a specific mention. And of course, there's, um, there's support for community org organisations addressing local needs, such as the enhanced efforts currently being, being made in London. So, those are a few of them. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, we've got time for a few more questions, Diane, but um, just before we go, would you like to explain to people again uh, what it is that's happening with the questions that we are not able to take right now? Uh, so we are collecting all of those. We've had a great flurry come through and we are um, collecting them up and we're do we are going to, when we publish the uh, webinar, which is being recorded, we will um, also publish those questions with their answers. Good. Very good. So next question. Yep, this is from Anna, and I'm going to send it your way, Councillor Day, and it is a question specifically about the development of Wall Park in Tawa. <laughs> Yes, so um, that is also, uh, that's been in the um, plans for a while. Uh, um, our amazing um, design team have done a, a, a wonderful project with a group of young people from Tower Intermediate last year um, looking at what would, what they would like in, in that playground. And um, the work has been done, so they've done the plans um, and now it's being passed over to our Parks Board and Rec team to deliver the playground. Um, this playground probably will be a little bit delayed because of COVID-19. Um, the hope is to get it um, underway over um, sort of Christmas, New Year time. Um, it's, it's got a component of it which um, the community can do some fundraising for. So under the playgrounds um, policy, it's not a playground that would usually have a barbecue um, sort of picnic area, but because the community they have specifically re requested that, we've decided as a community that um, we would like to do some community fundraising. So the, the team are getting underway to work out what that what financial um, sort of uh, cost we'll be looking at to fundraise for, and we'll get that to us soon so that we can get underway and start raising some money. But it's a really important project for the um, Linden community. Thank you. And one more 
Diane? One, one more. This one's come through just now from Tony. Uh, the annual plan mentions support to improve suburban centres. Given there is no reduction in the capital plan, what are the plans to improve suburban centres in the Northern Ward? And I'm just putting that out there. Whoever thinks they might want to pick that one up, just let us know. So it's a good question. So we've had um, in recent times, we haven't put any uh, resource aside for specific suburban centre um, upgrades with the exception of two and they were basically built around the, the growth planning which we had a few years ago so there's a, there's a degree of legacy around them. One was Tower, which obviously we have now I think completed uh, and the other is Karori which we planned but haven't delivered yet. The, the other thing which I mentioned in my um, presentation is what we call planning for growth and so that's about you know where we're going to see more people coming to live in Wellington over a period of time uh, and then where we are going to see the development occurring and then how we support that and investing in town centres is part of that. So where we actually invest is going to be driven to a large degree out of planning for growth. Uh, so we don't have an answer to that, but we will, we will be engaging with you on planning for growth uh, in coming months. And part of that will be about community placemaking. Uh, so we don't just want to go and stick a whole lot of houses in a particular area without um, making sure that the environment there is a really good quality environment. So we engage with the communities about that. Very good. So, and let's just hear from a couple of you in a, a wrap-up question, uh, which is, what are we going to be doing through this plan to be addressing climate change? Is there a couple of you who would like to pick that up? We had a few questions come in about that. Jenny, let's start with you, and then we'll go to Jill to close. Sure. So this annual plan, we've got some additional initiatives, which um, Mayor Foster mentioned during his, his speech, looking at uh, extra funding for home energy audits so that we can get more of our, our homes using less energy. We also have a lot of um, spending going into some transport infra infrastructure and Let's Get Wellington Moving, which is going to be looking at alternative transport such as cycleways and, um, you know, in future bus priority lanes, things that will improve um, your options other than driving your car around the city. So those are a couple of the things that we're going to be delivering this year. I mean, one of the ones that I'll speak to is um, around uh, resource recovery. Um, so the Mayor um, spoke about waste being a challenge for us um, as a council. In fact, it's a challenge for everybody in Aotearoa. Uh, we, we produce um, far too much waste um, in all sorts of different ways. And we have in our um, long-term plan um, a process looking at a resource recovery centre. And what we have, what we have asked through this um, annual plan is to accelerate that work so that we can actually really start to look at what we can do to recover our resources rather than just get rid of them. So, you know, currently our reliance has been on um, recycling and everybody will know that recycling is a massive challenge, not just for Wellington. Um, we actually, the biggest issue is having people who can receive the recycling to do something with it. Um, so we can do a great job of collecting it, but we need people to take it. But actually what we need to do is to stop producing the waste in the first place. So that's a really important part um, from my perspective and also um, having a look at some of the um, water sensitive urban design opportunities in our community to manage. Particularly we do have problems with flooding in the city and with sea level rise it becomes a bigger issue. We need to make sure that we're looking at ways that we manage water when we have big rain events. Mm -hmm. Great. And would you like to take the final word, Andy, on uh, why it's important from your point of view uh, that people um, en engage and um, put in submissions for this plan? Well, look, thanks, Esther. But this, we want people's feedback because this is your city. I mean, we're here to represent you, uh, to try and do our best on behalf of you as um, residents and business people of our city. Uh, but we don't know everything and we do need your feedback. We also need to know what matters to you. I think we've got a reasonably good handle on that because obviously we engage with you on a regular basis. We talk to you, we listen to you, uh, but we do want your feedback. And if anybody says it doesn't make a difference, it does. It always makes a difference. And so we always look forward to to getting your feedback and that'll help guide us in our decision making. So please, you know, any thoughtful, constructive, sensible ideas, um, we, we need to know what your passions are. And, um, and you know, we just look forward to hearing from you so that we can make some informed decisions on, on, the, on the basis of what you tell us. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. So, um, Olivia, could you just bring up for us uh, the general theme of the questions that we weren't able to answer? 
in this hour. Uh, there were other questions. Uh, these are not all of them, but they're a small selection and some of the themes. Um, uh, more have been coming in uh, as I've been talking, or as Andy's been talking. Uh, and you look out for those in the Frequently Asked Questions page on Let's Talk. Um, and one final poll for you before you leave. Oh, actually, just before the poll, Olivia, can we see the ways in which people can submit? Uh, so there's, there's, there's all these different ways of uh, submitting through the Let's Talk Wellington website, uh, through social media. You can email your submission form uh, or you can call a dedicated consultation uh, line. So would you like to launch the final poll, Olivia, because we'd be really interested, you can hear uh, how much the councillors want to hear from you and we'd like to hear from you, what are you interested in submitting on? So uh, could you let us know uh, which of these, if any, you will be providing feedback on or you may still be uh, considering and not sure? Remembering that there was a few questions here about uh, the submission process and we'll make sure that they get answered and frequently asked questions as well, if that's going to help you make up your mind. So are they coming in, Olivia? Yeah, we've got a great number of people who have voted in that poll, so I'll just pop those results up now for you. Launch. Oh, fantastic. A look at that. Right. 60, wonderful, wonderful. 64% on the annual plan, nearly 30 on the parking policy, and some of you not sure. Uh, and if you want to tell us in the survey that gets launched after this, uh, what would make you sure or what else you would need uh, to convert that into a submission, we'd love to hear about that too. So, um, back to the slide and to the panel. Uh, this is um, an opportunity to say thank you very much uh, for participating today, for um, uh, registering and turning up. This will now be made, this being recorded, will be made available online. Uh, so please do share it generously in your communities. Thank you uh, to the panel for joining us today and preparing uh, and being available in this brand new format, this brand new way, trying something new at Wellington City Council. Uh, and also to the people that you can't see in the background, um, Olivia, Amy and Diane, who've helped to make this happen along uh, with the rest of their teams. And uh, if we could finish, Jill, would you like to close us with a karakia? Kia wātia, kia mama, te ngākau, te tinana, te wairua, i te aratakatū. Koe arā e rongo, whakaeria a ke ki runga, kia wātia, kia wātia, ai rā, kua wātia. Kia ora, kia ora. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you. Thank you.